Let's ask ChatGPT to solve the Fibonacci series question in C++. There are many ways it can return the answer, so let's be a bit specific about the type of algorithm that we want. In this case, I'm going to add using recursion because that's the common way that we normally learn it the first time we encounter these subjects. Let's hit send and see what it says. It's giving us a recursive function in C++ to calculate the nth term of the Fibonacci series. So you can see from here, it already understands what it means to solve the Fibonacci series. This here is the algorithm, so it's the function called Fibonacci. If n is equal to 1 or 0, then we simply return n. Otherwise, we use recursion to return the sum of the previous two numbers. And here they even give us an example. But you see here, just like they say on the Berkeley website, the recursion tree for the Fibonacci series grows very quickly. When n is 5, we already have 15 nodes, which is a bit too much. So let's optimize our command a bit and ask ChatGPT to solve this using iteration in linear time. But before we do so, let's click on regenerate response to see if it's going to give us the same code once again. So previously we had a function called Fibonacci and it was a bit different because then we had if n equals one, return n, and then if n equals zero, return n. But now it's simply saying if n is less than or equal to one, return n. And also, if you look at the main function, they no longer test the function for a single value, which was seven in the previous snippets. Now, instead, they test it using a for loop. So they're going to print all the numbers in the Fibonacci series from zero all the way to the ninth term in the series. So this is pretty good. It shows that it understands what we are asking it to do. Now let's go back to our commands and ask it to solve the series using iteration in linear time. So I'm going to hit send one more time. And now it understands the commands once again. So we still have the std namespace, which is normal. Then we have our variables. And in this function, you see that it's passing the values between A, B, and C to compute the nth term of the Fibonacci series. So now again here, they use a for loop to return the first few numbers in the series. So we have the first 10 numbers here with zero included. And it even gives us a few explanations here, which can be helpful if you're still new to programming. So I recommend that if you use ChatGPT for coding or to help with your college assignments, try to read the explanations that they give you so that you don't just copy the code, but instead you improve your knowledge about concepts in programming. So I hope this helps a bit on how you can send comments to ChatGPT for coding. This was just one example using the Fibonacci series, but that's it for now. We'll test for other popular algorithms in C++ using ChatGPT coding.